So I'm Thiago, I'm based at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And then three years ago, I kind of got in touch with this Wikidata world and I brought an idea to my PhD supervisor uh, about working with Wikidata for the human cell atlas in the context of cell types and trying to see how these two things can interact. And, and even though in my life, Wikidata came before the biocreation and before the ontology worlds, I'm starting the presentation with the ontology side of it, just for this story. So the, the cell ontology, uh, as many of us are aware, is, is becoming the core provider of IDs for cell type annotation in single cell resources and many others. So this was a recent publication, uh, my David and others, describing the different resources in the context of the human cell atlas that are used in cell types. And it's about 2,400 terms, which is a pretty decent amount, but as Frederick mentioned uh, yesterday or the day before, it's n n still not enough. We are still figuring out ways of uh, having a better coverage in uh, cell ontology and, and a better fit to the single cell ecosystem. So this is one example, can I point? Yeah, this is an example from the cell by gene platform and one data set that they had there. And in the data set, they have outer provided labels and you can see there are distal fibroblasts, very bronchial fibroblasts and proximal fibroblasts, whatever that means. And when they annotated that to CL labels, they had to chunk all of that into fibroblasts because they couldn't find a term in CL that corresponded to that, so they used the next upper term. And that, that leads to gaps in, in single cell RNA-seq annotation, and, and it's not as good as it should be. So this is one of the justifications of what I'm currently doing now, is to explore how Wikidata can be useful to help this fill this gap. So Wikidata is this collaborative knowledge graph that anyone can edit, anyone can query, and it's really fast to modify. You don't need to download Protege and, and know how to use GitHub and so on. You can just add it in the browser and you don't even need an account, which is a bit uh, frightening because anyone can go and just mess up with the data, but in practice, it's a bit like Wikipedia. It's in, in the ecosystem of Wikipedia, it's linked to a Wikimedia Foundation, and in theory, it doesn't work, but in practice, it, it kind of does. Um, and it allows us two types of fast editing. You can just go to the interface and do some uh, drive-by creation, as Charlie likes to say, and, and you go there and just edit a term in there, or you can use some API, process some tables, and put them in, in batch. All right, it's rich in, in biomedical information. There were many different projects that already reconcile databases and ontologies to weak data, and big resources like the disease ontology and BG have connections to, to weak data, but also smaller resources that, that were dying out and died out, but before they died out, they made their license available and they could be uh, merged into Wikidata. So Wikidata has multilingual support, so entries in Wikidata have support for labels in about 300 different languages, and that's in clear contrast to Obo Foundry ontologies where everything is, is in English. And it's CC0, but you have provenance information, so you can attribute where you're getting each statement. So that's, that's Wikidata. There's this nice paper about its use in the life sciences, if anyone is interested. And all right, so a big part of my PhD studies was just hard creation of cell types into Wikidata. And the, one reason why this is much faster than doing the cell ontology of course, with its limitations, is because if you take an ontology, you have a preferred label, and Wikidata also has a, a preferred label, and a stable identifier, so a label and identifier. You have hierarchy, you have multi-hierarchies in the, in the cell ontology and Wikidata, and in the cell ontology, you have definitions, both logical definitions and textual definitions, and these are not simple to come by in a way that, that, that is machine-readable, but Wikidata doesn't care about definitions. You have descriptions, so if you have a label and a provenance, that is good enough for adding a term to Wikidata. Of course, this might be in a lower standard of quality than you expect when reusing a project, but it's enough to just move back from whole structured pieces of text to a structured database. So in my PhD, I basically read a bunch of papers, like I had this discipline of writing one or two papers every day and extracting the cell types and putting them in the Google Sheets, then running some Python code that added these cell types to Wikidata 
with some subclass structure, and, and this is the source, the paper that sourced that information. So very basic hierarchy and uh, without much information, but enough to give this types an identity. I also did some work mapping the cell ontology to Wikidata. So early this year, I kind of completed these mappings, these XRAFs from Wikidata to the cell ontology. So we could have this kind of coverage. And uh, this hot term looks like in, in, in when you go to the web interface of Wikidata. You have the name, you have an ID, then you have some description, a cell type of the human nervous system. This is not, look, it's not a definition, right? It's just some general description to differentiate this from other things that could be called human astrocyte. And then you have the triples, the, the, the properties, then a subclass of astrocytes, a subclass of human cell. Is this a good design pattern? I don't know, maybe not, but it's something that is there. And then instance of cell type, part of human brain, and then an image and other types of information, all right? And in the process, we added, we, we, I added <laughs> 4,600 cell types, cell classes to, to Wikidata and improved these other metadata in an additional 1,200 cell classes. So now, if you go to the cell hierarchy on Wikidata, you find 6,100 6, total cell classes that are species neutral, but mammalian focused, kind of. It's this in contrast with the cell ontology that has about 2,700 that have a much more quality of curation, of course, but just give it the pros and cons of each uh, project. And then there are some human-specific classes, mouse-specific classes. There's this whole ecosystem. So that's basically what uh, one of the things I've been doing in my PhD. And though Wikidata is really nice, the, 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 the way it is, it, it's too flexible for most researchers to actually use that in their research workflows and their analysis workflows. So now for the last part of my PhD, I'm focusing on the integration of uh, weak data with the cell ontology. And for example, how we can do a better workflow for selecting weak data terms that can be imported into cell ontology and the other way around. Uh, and these are some <laughs> GitHub issues that David uh, raised on the CL GitHub page last week. So improve these mappings to, to get multilingual support in the ontology. Um, mapping Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has text, has images, has links to Wikidata. And then if you get all the, these links together, you can use Wikipedia information in your tools. And then uh, have this, this X refs and then com completing. So these things. They are not specific for CL, they could be used for other ontologies. So that's, I think that's one of the take home messages. Wikidata can be a good point for interacting with different aspects of your community. Uh, and that's it, I want to thank all the people that were involved somehow in this project, uh, my lab in Brazil and all the other communities that are somehow involved. And if you have any questions, we have I think uh, one minute and something to answer. So thank all of you for this. Thank you. Yes, indeed, one minute for questions. Yeah. yeah. So did you say you added 4,000 cell classes into uh, Wikidata before? Yeah. So uh, do you think that, uh, so for like which, which classes, when you're curating from your perspective now on Wikidata and CL, which classes would go in CL, which classes would not go in CL, but in Wikidata, and how do you see that kind of thing uh, being organized in the future? So where would you start, and for which reason would you go to the mm -hmm, others? Mm -hmm. First, I think that we in CL need to decide what we want in CL. So I, I don't think we can answer that question. Uh, so what's, what's the scope of CL? Do, do we want to cover all cell types that were described, or all cell types that I used in annotation, and um, I don't have that answer right now, actually. Uh, so, but I think that it can be a platform for a future work. So, for example, you could have map the cell by gene annotations and create terms on Wikidata for them, and then have a quick NTR process to add them to cell ontology. So I think for the ones that are there, there's no good heuristic to determine which ones fit or not. Maybe the ones that have a Wikipedia page, these ones probably should have some kind of link in CL, but uh, I don't have a good answer. But I would say that most of them are in the, could be in the scope of CL if someone wrote uh, a ticket. Thanks. <laughs>